Hey gang, before this episode starts, I'd like to say that it is sponsored by Urban, the app and web-based way for you to book wellness treatments such as massage, manicures and pedicures, facials and osteo services, and have them delivered to your door and provided by trained practitioners in your own home, office, or hotel room. If you go back to episode 62 of Tiki Chris Talks, you'll hear my experiences using Urban and booking their services. I loved it. And you'll also hear there's a special promo code to get 15% off your first booking with Urban. And that is T-I-K-I-P-O-D, Tiki Pod. And to find out more, you just need to go to UrbanMassage.com or look for them at I am Urban Strong on Twitter and Urban.Strong on Instagram. So that's Tiki Pod, 15% off, urbanmassage.com. Do yourself a favor. You're going to love it. I had one of the best massages of my life, thanks to Urban. All right, now here's the episode. Hey, guys, this is Chris, and I am back. I am at the uh, Barbican Conservatory, one of my favorite places in uh, central London, actually. And I'm going to be talking about one of my favorite things, and that's chocolate. And I am here with Benjamin Fitteret, he is a sourcing ambassador for Valrona, exactly. and it sounds like he maybe has the uh, dream job. So, Benjamin, thank you for your time. I know you've had a busy day. Thank you, yes. Chris, and uh, thank you for introducing me. Yeah, of course. And just briefly, what is it that you do? What is this uh, sourcing? So, sourcing is uh, revealing, identifying um, some ingredients. So, the, the term sourcing could be used to any type of food ingredients and any ingredients in the world. Uh, but uh, I do that myself only for cocoa, and okay. I've been doing that for the last 15 years. Okay. I sourced uh, a lot of West African cocoa, uh, first for the industry, like uh, uh, what you need to do a Kit Kat bar or. Uh, or um, a Cadbury egg, for okay. example, it's important. It's most of the chocolate industry is around that. And then I discovered that cocoa was not just cocoa, and there was there were cocos. And uh, as soon as I have personally a um, uh, family activism towards Africa and uh, southern territories, I wanted to continue my uh, job of carrying. Uh, uh, great products from the south to the north, but then I discovered the diversity of cocoa and I joined Varona at that time mm-hmm. and uh, started to travel. So the first country I've been for Varona was Grenada. Right, I've okay. never been to <laughs> other Caribbean islands but the French ones before. Okay. And uh, I discovered Grenada, Trini- uh, Trinidad, uh, Dominican Republic, Jamaica, Peru, Brazil, a lot of countries. Okay. And Valrona sources from 16 countries, is that correct? Exactly. Uh, we've been sourcing a little for more, but we recently had to shut down some sourcing because uh, the quality was not to the point of uh, where we were expecting or, uh, or maybe sometimes a relationship with somebody doesn't yes. work out the way you want. Uh, but the, the idea is what, what we like in those 16 different origins is the, the diversity. What uh, we want to bring to the chocolate makers, uh, so Varona is mostly a, a B2B company, so doing chocolates for craftsmen of the world. Uh, and what we, we, we liked is to promote the diversity. There is not one chocolate, and the, the, the wording we have for that is, uh, the best chocolate in the world is the one you like. Yes. So we have to adapt that to uh, all the flavor and all the palette of the world. And so that brings us to work in, uh, in Asia, in Bali, in uh, a lot of African countries, since Madagascar, Togo, Ivory Coast, Ghana, and Sao Tome. Uh, most chocolate comes from Africa. So most chocolate yeah. from most, well, cocoa, most cocoa from from, from Africa, mm-hmm. and actually uh, it's 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 an introduced plant. Uh, mm-hmm. The cocoa uh, historically comes from uh, Latin America. Uh, there are two uh, origins of cocoa that are both uh, Central and Southern America. Mm-hmm. So uh, the Amazonian uh, for uh, some four stereotype and the Criollo might be uh, you might look uh, more of the Central America such as Mexico, Belize and those area and the Orinoc Valley of uh, Venezuela as well. Okay. And earlier in a presentation you were giving, you you focused a lot on Belize. Do you want to talk about what Valrona is doing there? Yeah, well, we're, we're, uh, it's the idea is again to uh, promote uh, an origins that we found interesting in terms of flavor. Uh, we we found a unique. 
unique cocoa over there that was uh, uh, on a unique blend of different flavors. We've been working a lot on the uh, organolytic uh, profile of cocoa, mm -hmm. uh, and we've been doing that for the last 20 years. And we've uh, formed internal jury that are tasting all the chocolates. Okay. And, and what we found of Belize was a unique flavor that we, we would have to do blends of different origins to find the same one. And uh, what we love about Belize, first we found uh, the cocoa was interesting and also once you have to uh, bring a story of uh, cocoa, it's not like in wine where you immediately, you mention a Chardonnay to somebody and it brings flavor already. Or you bring a Syrah type of wine and then also it brings flavor and, uh, and, um, and imagination of the customer. Once you talk about cocoa, uh, some areas might be a little complicated. If you want to highlight Nicaragua, Nicaragua, what really want to highlight? There was a dictature, there was a lot right, of yeah. complicated things. Mm -hmm. And once you start to uh, identify the products with what it brings, then Belize makes a lot of sense because Belize is a unique country. It's, okay. uh, it's a, a, a blend of culture that is unique in Central America. It's the first, it's the only uh, Latin Amer uh, Central American country that speaks uh, English. Okay. Uh, and, and it's a very, a very unique um, um, place. And also, when you start to quote Belize, a lot of people think about Belize. It uh, reminds them maybe their, uh, um, their wedding uh, holiday. Nice holiday yeah. Exactly. So uh, that's what we wanted to highlight. There was first a fantastic uh, cocoa, a great story of the flavor and that what we could bring of the imagination of the people we get from Belize. And the last but not the least, we are the fantastic partner over there, okay. which is Uncommon Cacao, Maya Mountain Cacao locally. This structure is committed to the value chain. They work hand in hand with farmers to promote their job and to make it sustainable. We signed a 10 years partnership with them, which means for the next 10 years, we're gonna have, well, now 10 years now, we, we signed it in 2014. So until 2024, we have a, a unique access to the cocoa from the farm and uh, we're developing a lot of things together. So they were visiting us in France recently and I took them to uh, those uh, three stars uh, restaurants etc so they could see so what they know we what, the, what you're looking for and why I guess more than anything exactly right do you know some guy called Pierre Hermé yes a French yes, yes, yes. so the girl founding Maya Mountain Cacao her name is Emily Stone she, she's a U mm -hmm. US citizen she had to visit us three years ago and she went to Varona School of Pastry and she learned how to do macaron okay the day Which after, is what Pierre exactly, is famous for yes. The day after, we were visiting Pierre Hermé in Paris because he was the first to receive our Belizean cocoa as a, a signature couverture for him oh, that we okay. did for only for him as a start, and then we promoted it differently. And uh, she brought him a macaron that she had done with the the chocolate from Belize that he was using as well, and he took the macaron, cut it, put and and tasted. And honestly, this kind of moment is what I care in my job. Sure. I, I'm, I consider my job is creating bonds between okay. people that normally wouldn't be connected. And connecting farmers from Belize to uh, Pierre Hermé, I honestly, for me, it's ideal. Sure. And you know, how often are you traveling? I'm traveling, uh, I've been traveling a little less recently because I just got married. I'm going to be a uh, father soon. No. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, but I've been traveling roughly, it's eight to ten travels a year. Okay. So almost one travel a month. Okay. It's going to be one week to ten days a month that we'll be covering. But always in the tropics. Always, always in the tropics. Uh, uh, okay. Yes. Okay. And sometimes you cover markets. And, yeah. But most of my job, uh, like here, uh, when I'm doing interviews, views in, in the UK, yeah. I've done that in the US as well, but most of our travels are uh, dedicated to origins because we want to see them, the farmers and the, the partners we have up there, at least once a year, so we are sure of uh, things we don't see on Skype or exchange on email, yeah. I, have, I have a direct connection. Okay, and just briefly, how can someone, if someone wants a job like yours, which I'm sure a lot of people listening would think this is a dream job. 
What's your background? How would you get into being a, a uh, cocoa sourcer? <laughs> my job and my, my background around it is uh, being a traveler since I was four. Okay. Uh, my father was a traveler and still lives in West Africa. Okay. My grandfather was a traveler in West Africa as well for many years. So I think there was something around the tropics and the, 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 the traveling. Uh, as a kid, uh, as a kid, I grew with wording as such as Tanganyika as a dream word. Uh, uh, it's a, a lake around Tanzania, yeah, right, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Um, and uh, and then there was something I wanted to dig in, and then I told myself, "Oh, what can I do around that and other things I love?" And other things I loved since I was a kid was planting stuff. Yes. So I grew up in the French islands also, so Guadeloupe, Réunion, nice. and uh, the Comoro as well. And uh, when I was coming back to France where my grandparents were, etc., I was always bringing me some corns, wheat, or whatever, and I was trying to plant that. Never worked <laughs> because too humid, too not the same climate, etc. Sure. But I told myself, oh, there is something you like about it and thinking of it. And so I became an agronomist. Okay. And an uh, agronomist in a school that was training people to get job and work in a tropical environment. So rather than learning how you plant uh, uh, wheat in Europe, yes. I was uh, learning how to plant uh, cocoa or cotton in okay. West Africa. Oh, very interesting. And so you're talking about a lot about what you love. I'm going to try my hardest to get this out before Valentine's Day. Uh -huh. So what should people be looking for? I'm sure Valentine's Day is huge for the chocolate industry, for Valrona. Fantastic. Uh, consumer side of things, what should people be looking for when they're going to buy a chocolate for their sweetheart it's, or for it's, themselves? Yeah, it's once you, you want to be very involved in what you do for your sweetheart yeah. or the people you love, and that's what you love with chocolates, is be sure of what you get in it. And when I say that, I say you want to be concerned by the value chain of the products you, yes. you want to get in. So that's where you should dig more on what the craftsmen are doing. So every little chocolate shop that you would find close to your door mm -hmm. might be better to any other thing that you would find in right. maybe some supermarket. Yeah. Um, the, the, the chocolate mm -hmm. industry in the world is a uh, hundred billion dollars industry. Wow. Yeah. Uh, but it's mostly governed by uh, by retail products that are maybe not that concerned yeah. with what's more happening. More confectionery, more sugar than exactly. chocolate sometimes. 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 Right, yeah. and, and also, uh, maybe you shouldn't look too much at the, the, the little seal around it. A fair trade might mm. not be that fair, etc. Okay. Right. Okay. Uh, so I'm, not ju I'm just saying that... Uh, if you want to support something uh, good for the industry, the environment, the value chain, go to any small chocolate shop you found around your place okay. and you'd be better. Oh, great. And if people want to find out more about what you do and Valrona? Uh, maybe go on our website. Uh -huh. There's a, on the Varona website, okay. uh, you would find a, a lot of the information, a lot of details on the, the actions we get committed to also. We work on all these communities and uh, we didn't want to bring today uh, like a, uh, a patchwork of everything we do yeah, right, because yeah. we are so great. No, we, we, we do things because we care. We do things because we care for not just the people we work with, but uh, the chocolate itself. Yes, and we want to promote that as, as long as possible. And that's where we get committed, not just to do good things. That's great. Well, thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Chris. I learned a lot today. Thanks. Thank you.